Nice. What was it like interacting with the with the Haitian children? Was that like first off was was that your favorite part? I suppose, or or if there was another. I would think going the to the school and the orphanage yeah. were the best parts, because like these kids, they don't have anything, but they're just so happy, and like you really, it really makes you appreciate where you come from, and it's just very moving. I don't know. Yeah, I think probably the most humbling experience was obviously being able to go to an orphanage, and all of these orphans were um, children that had lost their parents in the earthquake. And I had never felt so much joy. Every single orphan there ran into our arms as soon as we got there. Wow. D- there, was, there was no communication. It was like out of, straight out of a movie scene. And m- most of the kids that we had encountered at that point in the village, some of them were like that. But every single one of these orphans, they wanted to be held you can, uh, and how could you not want to? The smiles on their faces, the joy, and just excitement for for us to be for us to be there with them. You felt that, and and that really moved us. And it was extremely difficult to leave. Um, you know, when we were visiting that orphanage that one day, because we only got to go for uh, probably an, an hour, an and hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a six day trip, and all I think, though, right? And that's, that's traveling not much. plus traveling to the. Wow. Okay, so I guess in all, it'll be what like eight or. Or no, six, six with traveling. Six with traveling. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't, I mean, that's, that's fast. Yeah. That's fast. Yeah. And for, I mean, for those days we we're, I mean, working, you know, dog eight, tired, eight, <laughs> eight, 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 <laughs> 10 hour days, um, building these homes. Um, I mean, 98 degrees, 98% humidity. Like um, <laughs> 10 minutes into working, we were just drenched beyond belief <laughs> and so dehydrated already. And we're like, how are we going to make it through the rest of the day? But. I mean, you just look at the kids and you look at the families and just kind of drives you. Yeah, and these these are basic houses here. I mean, it's oh, not yeah. like, you know, you're not, you're not building pools in the backyard. I mean, nothing that you would think is too strenuous. But no, I, I know better than anybody else at times that construction can be a nightmare. Uh, but when, if it's very good cause, it makes it worth it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. But tell me about that. They're like, what? Uh, they're pretty basic houses, I guess. Just like how many rooms and, and what was the whole process? Yeah, I mean, it was, they were extremely basic. One they, room. Yeah, one room. There were four windows. There was a, a porch on the front of the of the home there was obviously a door in the front and then a door out the back and then like an uh, aluminum roof which is the hardest thing to put on yeah the roof oh my gosh (laughs) and then i mean because three quarters of these guys have never even used a hammer before and so (laughs) the guys that had were up scaling the roof and because everybody else was scared to get up there i mean because i mean it was still pretty tall yeah um, and we were still pretty high ups, but I mean, it was, it was really cool to, to come together. And I think what is so unique about our experience there is, especially in my group is I got to build the home alongside the future homeowner and his family. Just about to ask you that, like, what was their reaction to you guys helping them out? It it was just, they were so grateful. And what was really cool is, I mean, day one, you know, we got the basic frame up and then day two, then day three. And then it, and then we got to the stage of, you know, needing to paint. And Mr. Bodden was the guy that I built, that my group built the home for. And it was him. And then his two daughters were there as well. And you could see the ownership that he wanted to take in his house. And we're building the, we're building the house. And I'm like, Mr. Bodden, this is your new home. This is going to be the home for generations to come. And you could see the, the sense of entitlement that he felt. And he started grabbing nails and, and hammering in last, last second nails that needed to, to, to make his house built on a solid foundation. He wanted to paint everything. He wanted his family to be a part of that. And so that was an extremely humbling experience to be able to, to do that alongside someone who you're going to affect their lives for forever and generations to come. What's interesting is that it's not. It's almost as if he the sense of entitlement, though, is interesting terminology. And in that the fact that he actually wanted to, to work for the house and actually earn it might show that maybe he was like, you know what, this is awesome, and I'm not going to let these guys just do all the work by themselves. I'm not personally entitled just to have this handed to me. I'm going to go out and work for it. So at least I have a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears in this project. I think that that's an ethic that we can take back here at home. I know a lot about blood, sweat, and tears, but and when you think about it, it's, it's important to really go on out there. Like I say, one of my favorite phrases on the show is that it doesn't count if you don't earn it. If you don't earn it, then what's, what's it worth? You know? Exactly. So, yeah, interesting there. What, do you, what, what about you, Luke? I mean, 
first off, did you guys play any soccer with these guys out of curiosity? <laughs> because I'm sure they schooled you. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They're they're really good at soccer. Yeah, I I can imagine. So they tend to be very very mm-hmm. very good. I guess that's. I mean, is, what else do the kids do though? I mean, do they have schooling and stuff and things like that or? Yeah, well, the observe? school that we went to to visit, um, it was destroyed in the hurricane in the earthquake. Right. And what they were basically living or working out of was just pop up tents, and they had about five or six of them, just like rows of them. But um, just pretty much in the outdoors, they're just learning and everything, and they're trying to raise some raise money for their school too. What was the school called again? I, f- I forgot, but I, you can't even imagine the conditions of the school. I mean, it was like three easy, like easy up tents put up with little rows of, of. I mean, they were almost like pews. They, they're just long little tables, um, all outdoors. And, and they I mean, had to contend with the heat that you had to contend. I mean, they had to do that on a yearly lifetime basis. Thinking about, I mean, yeah. like, I don't know. So, I mean, I find class boring and the conditions are okay. What happens if you're out in the scorching sun uh, and, and dealing with tents? And, and uh, I can't envision that. Yeah, I mean, and there was just one chalkboard in each room. Uh, the rooms weren't even really sectioned off. And, I mean, it was – the school was so much fun. Uh, it was Kevin Green's birthday who was there, and that was a, a fun memory that we had. <laughs> the entire um, school, we got together for a picture – and then the principal of the school, um, we sang happy birthday, and then they all do- dogpiled on <laughs> Kevin at the end of it. And so there's some great pictures, and that was a great memory because, I mean, all the kids obviously love, you know, having fun and singing happy birthday. So that was another special memory that we shared. Is there any way you guys can actually stay in touch with some of these folks? I know that Facebook is not really an option, uh, but uh, do you plan on going back anytime soon or pen pals? I think they might actually have some Facebook. Oh, really? Yeah, I uh, I actually still talk to a couple of the translators, uh, Ruth and Roosevelt. Um, they're both on Facebook, um, and I'm actually trying to help um, sponsor Roosevelt, who wants to come to the states to go to um, one of the one of these colleges, like an ITT co- college in in the states. And so I'm trying to work things out to to maybe help him be able to afford that. And so it's been really cool to follow up and, you know, the kids, you know, they say that the kids still ask about us. Um, and you know, you know, that in itself is, is extremely humbling. Um, wow. I mean that kids now are still talking about it. And there was, um, one of the, one of the biggest, um, pastor men, you know, ministers in Haiti said that the people of Haiti will never forget your face. Wow. They mm-hmm. will never forget your face. You'll come back, and 10 years later, they'll remember your face, and they'll remember your name. And he said that is what is so unique about the people of Haiti from any other place in the world is these kids get so um, you know, enamored with the love and joy that is shared through them and through us that they will never, ever forget you. That's and, I mean, he had – I mean, he just had chilling stories of of – of doctors and yeah. I mean, it just had some crazy stories of the Haitian people remembering people, you know, 10 years later from wow. just the face. So make sure you come back within 10 years. Yeah. Anything longer <laughs> than that, the statute of limitations sort of kicks into effect.